In this video, I want to go through and actually confirm that I do have the ability to purchase an item from the shop. So currently, if we view the shop character or the shopkeeper, we can see we have like the med kit, for example, it has a cost of 50. So I want to do a check before. So if I pick up this gold here, I have 50 gold. I want to build a check, click the item. Yes, I do have 50 gold. So we subtract the gold and add the item to use. So currently we don't need any gold at all. So let's fix that. So the way we need to do that is one, we need to calculate, have a way to calculate how much currency we actually have. So we can do that by a simple function here. We might as well go ahead and make it public. Let's do a, uh, let's see, we're going to only have it in stacks. So we're going to do int 32. Let's do current gold. Yeah, that'll be a good name or get current gold. So let's create that implementation. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to iterate over our inventory, find the gold, if we have any even, and return the stack size. So currently we want to return zero. So that way if we have nothing. So otherwise we do for f item data item n inventory items we're going to do a check so if item dot item class equals t subclass of then we want to do the gold so a gold All right so i guess i gotta go ahead and forward declare that one so let's go ahead and uh, include inventory shop tutorial public actors gold dot h So that'll do that comparison. So if the item class equals gold, we return item dot stack count. And it probably wouldn't hurt to print this out. So you log, log temp, warning, text, size or stack percent F or D item dot stack count just so we can see it. And I'm gonna go ahead and make this blueprint callable. So you function blueprint callable just so I can test it from Blueprint very easily. So let's recompile and relaunch. And then we want to go to our character. Let's open that on up and we're just gonna bind ourselves to an event. So like when we press I, we view the shop or our inventory. I wanna change this one to, uh, let's do T so we can see it. So let's call get current gold and we want to print out the value. So we're gonna do a print string for the value of our gold. So that's when we press T, so press T. We have zero, I pick this stack up, press T. We still have zero, I press T on this one, we still have zero. Okay, so we are not finding the gold. So let's see, where is, here it is. So for whatever reason, that's just not working. So let's see if there's a dot equals function, or maybe it's get. That might fix that. This does, it's the class. Let's just see. Might be worth printing out the class instead, just so we can uh, see what we're working with. Press I. Oops, not I, sorry. Let's, oh, dang, no, press T. Still zero. So let's print out what we are working with. So, Item percent s. We're gonna do item dot item class dot get name, and hopefully that'll well work. Let's see, item class is a t subclass of yet it's using the pointer. So let's see if that uh that works. Pick it up, press T, item gold. Okay, so it is confirming that it is gold, which kind of odd why it's not pairing it correctly. I feel like there's something I'm missing here, so let's search through it. So we get default object, which gets the class default object. Oops. 
Let's see. I could try comparing static class, which returns a U class, and I think that's what a T subclass of is. Still zero. All right, so we, we do know that we're getting the gold. So let's just confirm that that's the case. Pick up that, pick up that, press I, or no, press T. Okay, so that is, you know, working. So that's not it. So maybe we can do data class, compare those. Ah, there we go. So we can, there we go. So we're comparing the static classes. Okay. So we now are returning the stat count of just our gold. So we know that that is good to go. Let's go ahead and get rid of the logs and continue. So now we have that function we can use. So let's see, when we view the shopkeeper, we let's step back through our code again. Go to the inventory item, we click the item we call use item, pass in whether or not it is a shop item. So we go to use item. Right here, we check if it's a shop item. So we call use, we pass in ourselves, see if it's a shop item. Let's go to use, is in shop and character and character uh, get gold, get current gold greater than or equal to the, well, the price of the item. So item data dot item cost. However, this is going to be dependent not on the shopkeeper's price, but on the actual item cost itself. So if we want individual item cost, we're going to have to get that item from the shopkeeper. So we are currently on the item itself. What we need to do is create a variable from the shopkeeper and probably try to use it from there necessarily, or kind of use it from there. So if the shopkeeper is valid, we transfer the item. But we need to confirm whether or not we actually could pick the item up because right now we're just flat out using it. There's no, no basic logic there of whether or not we actually can use the item. So almost what we want to do is have use return a boolean so if we can use it then we return true if not we return false and because we're doing that check to see if we can add the inventory item that's going to dictate you know what happens as well so let's think about this for a second we can do that here we can do the check right there but that will limit us to the shops not having individual pricing. Instead that'll make it so the price of each item stays the exact same. The other route would be we figure out a way to get that specific item from the shopkeeper, figure out the price, and go from there. So if is shop item is valid, we should know what the shopkeeper is. So we can do that check, in my opinion, before we actually use the item. So I think that's what we're gonna do. So let's back to the use item make sure that's fine there so let's copy this move it down to here so make sure the item's valid which actually we're doing that yeah we're doing that very first thing so let's hit the shopkeeper's not valid shopkeeper is valid that means obviously we're using a shop item so i guess we could get rid of this boolean here as it's not really needed anymore Instead, we could pass it into the use function and calculate it there. So, but we have access to gold here, so it might be a little bit easier. So regardless, let's get ourselves onto the shopkeeper. So shopkeeper, let's create a function, void by item, or sorry, bool, and let's call it can by item. We're going to pass in our current gold. So... int32, current gold, and then the t subclass of, so we can get the item 
that we are trying to get. So we pass in obviously the item class. So let's create that implementation and call that function. So if shopkeeper and by item, we pass in our current gold, get current gold, and we pass in the, or not the item, it was the item subclass. So if we can do all that, we go through, get the class default object, and we call use on it. And then we tell the shopkeeper that we transferred the item. So we're essentially figuring out a way, we're grabbing the item and then we're transferring it later on. Alrighty, so let's see here. We could probably clean this up and change this up to transfer item as well instead of going directly to the item which does that. That might be something we do later on because I do want to expand this a little bit as per request of one of my Discord members. But let's see, we can buy the item. We get the default object. We use it. And then we transfer it. So we're obviously going to want to clean this up a little bit. So I just got to make sure I remember to do that. So we have, let's go to the can buy item and check it. So we want to get the value of the item subclass we're trying to find. So let's iterate through our items. So for f item data, do by reference item and items. If item dot item class equals item subclass, we want to check and see. So we're going to return current gold is greater than or equal to item dot. There it is. Item cost. And that's our return value. So item cost is actually, that's a float. I thought it was an integer. I don't know why it's, a, eh, yeah, I guess it doesn't matter. I think I had a different thought on how I wanted to do the currency. So otherwise, we return false. So simple as that. All right, so that should take care of that. So let's do a test. Save everything and give it a recompile. All righty, let's open the assets back up. Let's go to the... Shopkeeper real quick. So we have the item cost being 50 for the med kit. I press E, I click the med kit, nothing happens. I grab 50 gold. I click it and I can have, I can buy the med kit. Okay, let's make sure. So I'm going to make this 51 for the item cost. Because remember, this is currently a stack of 50 right there. So I have 50, this should cost 51. I click it and nothing happens. I pick up this other stack of gold, so now I have 150. I click it, and I can buy it. All right, so that works. Now we just got to subtract the gold, because currently we can buy infinite as long as the price is under our current gold. So when we go through and buy the item, we go through use it, here's where we need to subtract the item cost. So we need to get the item cost, which is even more of a reason to clean this up a bit. So if we can buy the item, we want to pass in the item to the shopkeeper and just flat out, you know, buy it. So we do transfer the item and, you know, that goes through and handles all that fun stuff. Let's do a, uh, let's do void buy item. We're just going to pass in our character. and the item. So let's clean this one up. And actually, we're gonna do this in a separate video, so I'm just gonna write the implementation of the function, like so, and stop it for this video. In the next video, we're gonna clean this up, and that should pretty much be the final portion of our inventory, assuming everything works on the client. So that is gonna be all for this video. If you like what I'm doing and you wanna help support me, you can find a link to my Patreon down in the description below where I have a Team Deathmatch series just for patrons, as well as you get early access to pretty much all of my videos. If you have any questions or anything like that, feel free to join my Discord server that's also linked down below, and I'll try to help you out. So, I will see you in the next video.